quickly, guys. Uh, we have a slide hole for questions. Okay. It is there. The event event number is U four O one. Okay. If you wanna ask questions, throw it in Slido, and you can vote if you want. If you wanna read it, really hear the, the answer to those questions, you can vote for the question. So the most uh, the the questions with the most votes will be answered. You know first. If we have. Okay, we're gonna start. Okay, thank you guys for inviting me to do this. So before I start, I just want to introduce myself. So my name is Nader Atalla. Okay, I'm an addiction medicine specialist. Also, I am a family physician and I'm a lecturer at University of Calgary. And to be honest, this is the first time in my life to teach addiction to this age. Usually I teach medical student or medical resident or the people like I'm treating, like sometimes I go to rehab centers to give lectures about uh, uh, addiction. I used to work as a psychiatrist in Egypt. Then I, uh, after that I moved to Canada and when I moved to Canada, I worked as a, I used to work as addiction counselor for two years uh, at the mustard seed. I don't know if you know mustard seed. Yeah. so. Then after that, I got uh, my certification as a family doctor, and then I did more training, and then I become an addiction specialist. Uh, also, I run a program for treating addiction. It's called the Soul Program uh, for people struggling with cocaine, heroin, fentanyl addiction, all types of addiction, even food addiction, or sex addiction, or any any form of addiction. Um, before I start, I just want to make sure you know what does addiction mean uh, so I, w I need your input what do you think is uh, what is addiction what is the definition of addiction or what what does it mean I'm addicted to cocaine or I'm addicted to marijuana or I'm addicted to e-cigarettes what does it mean yeah you can't stop doing it why you can't stop doing it because you will have withdrawal symptoms okay Sometimes the withdrawal symptoms are physical and sometimes psychological. Like uh, psychological mean like if you are addicted to cannabis, which is marijuana, if you stop, you're going to have some anxiety, you're going to have uh, mild depression, you're going to have irritability, you're going to have restlessness. So sometimes the withdrawal is psychological, sometimes it's physical. And the physical is mainly with opioid. Does anyone hear about fentanyl? Okay. So this is an, a, a, a strong addictive substance. If you stop using fentanyl, you will have flu-like symptoms and you will have back pain and you will have diarrhea and you will have abdominal pain and you will have vomiting and you have, sometimes you feel cold, sometimes you feel hot and you have insomnia. So addiction, as you mentioned, you know, you get used to something and then when you stop, you will have some symptoms. What else? So this is one of the symptoms or one of the criteria to diagnose addiction is uh, you can't stop. What else? Yes. Your body relied on it? Yeah, your body relied on it. Okay. And w which we call dependence. So you are dependent on this substance. And the problem with dependence, okay, there is something called the tolerance. What does it mean tolerance? Uh, Let's say you are smoking, uh, you are vaping, and you start with uh, three milligram nicotine. I'll meet you with, uh, after six months, it will be six milligram nicotine. Uh, another six months, it will be 12 milligrams uh, nicotine. So you will feel you need to up the dose of the addictive substance all the time. Everyone will be different. Some people will continue on the same dose for a, for a year. Some people will continue on the same dose for two days. Then after two days, they up. That's why you hear in the news people are dying. Why people are dying, do you think? Because they take too much. Yeah, they, why they take too much? Because what you mentioned, they are... Yes, because uh, the same dose doesn't give the same effect. So I need more, I need more. What else? It like releases, like, what's it called, dopamine? Yes, so this is, what, this is the biology of the addiction. 
you know, it releases dopamine. Like when you inject heroin or you smoke cigarettes or you, 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 you do um, even porn addiction or food addiction, it releases something called the dopamine. And this dopamine is, uh, is responsible for the reward. Like, you know, when you get high, when we get higher grades in whatever you are doing or you succeed in something, you feel good, okay? This is because of dopamine. Uh, when you are hungry and then you eat, you feel good because of dopamine. This is a chemical uh, substance inside the brain that is released with any reward. But the problem is the addictive drugs is causing release of this dopamine too. Okay, but uh, there is, as we mentioned, there is tolerance. So when there is dopamine, okay, uh, if you take, let's say you inject one gram of heroin, okay, uh, one gram of heroin in six months will not release anything. You will need two grams or three grams. What else? What else to, to, to say this guy is addicted to something? What are the symptoms do you think? We mentioned dependence, tolerance, uh, and you mentioned uh, dopamine. Okay, let, 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 let's. I will. I'll make it easy for you. Okay, people. People who have addiction, you know, there's something called the DSM. This is DSM is Diagnostic and Statistical Manual. This is the Bible for the psychiatrist to diagnose some someone with something. He needs to fit certain criteria. So these are the criteria for addiction. It is 11 criteria. So if you have two or three out of these criteria, this means you are an addict, okay? And you need treatment. So one of them, you will have failure at work, school, or home. So using something, and this is causing it. So let's say you, you are smoking cannabis and you have repeated absence from a school because of cannabis. This will lead to failure at a school, right? Uh, if, uh, if, uh, if if parent have addiction problem, this will lead to failure at home. Um, if a doctor, uh, sometimes I treat even doctors, they, some of them will have addiction, you know, they will have failure at work. Um, also people who have addiction, usually they have social or interpersonal problems. L like they f you find them irritable all the time, uh, easy triggered, easily provoked, so they always fight with their parents, they always fight with their uh, colleagues, they always fight with their teachers. So you'll find always problems, social or interpersonal. And of course, there is legal problems. Um, also craving, does anyone know this? What does it mean, craving? Yeah, a strong psychological desire to use a substance or to use uh, nicotine or to use cocaine or to watch pork or to eat carbohydrate. Also using in a situation when it is physically dangerous, like you know, the driving under influence, right? And some people will operate a big machine and the uh, using the, during doing this. Um, and people start to give up important things. So if you are interested in sports, in basketball, and then you start uh, using cannabis, you will find you give up this sport, you are no, no longer interested in it, and you focus in using and even thinking about the substance. Um, as you mentioned, there is tolerance, like you have to up the dose all the time. There is withdrawal symptoms. Also, you spend so much thinking about it, okay? trying to obtain it, using it, and recovering from it. So you'll find I have some, some patients, they spend maybe 12 hours doing something involving addiction. Calling the dealers, uh, trying to buy it, uh, using it, preparing it, or recovering from the effect of it. Uh, another one is unsuccessful attempt to, to quit. So they're trying to quit, but they can't. This is one uh, of the symptoms. They know that it is bad. They know that e-cigarettes can cause lung problems, okay? They know that cannabis can trigger schizophrenia or psychosis, but still doing it. I, I have some patients, they have stomach ulcer, okay? And still drink. And the, the, the alcohol is causing the stomach ulcers. But the, 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 this is part of the addiction problem. They use, in spite of 
knowing the negative consequences. Any questions? Like this is the, the symptoms of addiction. Okay. So w w how we classify, there are some people have mild addiction, some people have uh, moderate addiction, some people have severe addiction. It depends on how many symptoms do you have. So we said addiction has 11 criteria. If you have only two or three, we call this mild addiction or mild substance use disorder. If you have four to five, we call this moderate. If you have more than six, we call this severe. Usually people with severe addiction, they will need hospital. They will need to be admitted to a rehab or a detox. Then after they spend one month or two or three months, they come to see the doctor. Any questions? No? How many people struggling with what is the prevalence of addiction? 10 to 20 people of the population of people have addiction problem. And if I include food addiction or sex addiction or relationship addiction, okay, uh, or sports addiction or work, do you know that there is a sports addiction? Okay, there is work addiction, there is e-cigarette addiction. There is nicotine addiction, there is cannabis addiction. If we include all types of addiction, 60% of people have addiction. So this is a very common thing. But people seek help and they, they, they ask for help and the treatment when it is uh, mainly about drugs because the complication and the side effects and the uh, negative consequences are more than other types of addiction. You see all these types of addiction. Some people are addicted to sports. You're going to tell me, oh, this is good. Yeah, I wish I'm addicted to sports. Yeah, the, 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 uh, yeah but, but you know, I, some of my patients, they have arthritis and joint pain and the heart problem because the, the, the exercise may be six hours a day or eight hours a day, and they can't stop. You know, these big guys, you know, with big muscle, lots of them, they have addiction to, sport, to sports. Yes. <laughs> this one <laughs> okay yeah so <laughs> this has come from a study okay they were doing a study to identify what is releasing dopamine so they find all of this can release dopamine okay so uh, making someone smile there is addiction we call it codependency codependency means like I want to make everyone happy around me I want to make them happy and this will comfort me okay even the, the other people around me will start abusing me, okay? But I, I, I want them to, I, I want to make them happy. We, we call this codependency. So this is some sort of addiction. And some people even addicted to, we call it compulsive helping. Compulsive helping, they are addicted to helping others. Oh, this is good. This is Christian teaching. That is good. No, but when you are doing something, it's causing you harm. And uh, sometimes it harm other because sometimes let's say I see a homeless guy uh, on the street and I give him ten thousand oh dollars. Uh, what do you think he's gonna do with it? You should give me the ten thousand dollars. You give you, <laughs> okay? <laughs> so yeah, you, there's something wrong, okay? Um, because lots of people who are struggling with homelessness, lots of them they have addiction problems. So sometimes when you give them twenty dollar, you know what they do? Yeah, they go and buy drugs. So it looks like I'm a good Christian guy giving them money, okay? Uh, uh, but, but at the end, uh, am I helping them or harming them? No, I'm harming them. So some, if I am addicted, addicted to helping others, I will not see the harm. I will keep helping, okay? And I don't see any harm or maybe, okay, I will ignore my family, ignore my kids, I neglect them and just to stay at the church all the time, serving and teaching. If this is good? No. no, there is something like there's something wrong. Like he, the, John will tell me, okay, stay at home, help your family. You can't be at the church all the time. You need to balance your life a little bit. So sometimes people are addicted to make others happy. Like, where it's like toxic, right? Yes, yeah. to a point when it is toxic. Okay, and you know, because you ask this question, I want to expand you, your, your vision about addiction. So you know the new definition of addiction. So I give you the symptoms of addiction, okay? But the new definition of addiction is seeking reward 
relief or escape. Again, seeking a reward, relief or escape. Why, why? So the, the studies have shown that there are some people, for multiple reasons, they don't feel okay inside. They have chronic feeling of unhappiness, chronic feeling of restlessness, or a chronic feeling of discontent. And I'm sure, and they say 60% of people have this problem. So if we, 10, 10 people are attending this session, six of, the, of them, six of the people attending this session, okay, they have addictive tendency, which is what? Seeking reward, relief, or escape. Why they are doing this, seeking reward, relief, or escape? Because they don't feel okay inside. Okay, so they're gonna they're gonna keep they're gonna keep looking for something to make them feel good. Okay, so some of them will uh, start to smoking cannabis. Some of them will addicted to helping others. Some of them will watch porn. Some of them will uh, ad get addicted to work. Some of them will get addicted to video games. Some of them will get addicted to making people happy. Some of them will get addicted to um, certain people, like certain persons or a relationship, some people get addicted to gambling to make themselves happy. So again, what is addiction again? Seeking reward. Reward, relief, or escape. Yes. Why they, why they are doing this? They oh. like a product. Yeah, they have, and we call it they have a void in their heart. Like they, they have something, they, you know, they have a chronic feeling of unhappiness inside. And chemically, why, why this happened? Because what you mentioned, some people are born with low dopamine. So dopamine is what makes us happy. Some people are born with low dopamine. So they keep all the time, all their life, even w w when they are still like two years old, three years old. I'm sure you have met some kids, some uh, 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 kids, you give them a toy. No, 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 no. Give them another toy. No, 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 no. They are grumpy all the time, cranky all the time. This could be a sign of addiction. Okay, because you don't feel okay inside. Can you have too much dopamine, like being born with dopamine? Higher dopamine? Um, we, have, we didn't study this because this is not, not causing problem. But people will be happy all the time. <laughs> like, <laughs> yes, kind of. <laughs> like we study things that cause problems. Okay, so uh, people, yes. Yes, yeah, so he's bringing now what is the treatment? Okay, if I'm born with this and I ha have chronic unhappiness, chronic discontent all the time, what would be the treatment? If there is something you give to me to make me happy? Yeah, if it becomes clinical depression, like depressed, I, I, I don't know if you know the symptoms of depression, you know, loss of interest, depressed mood, uh, fatigue, low energy, low concentration, uh, feeling guilty all the time, feeling worthless. If, if people like this, yeah, the, you will need some some therapy, okay. But uh, like antidepressant to bring is your chemicals up. It's not just the dopamine is gonna bring up serotonin, dopamine, norepinephrine, other chemicals that you need in the brain. But also there are some. Yeah, th this is to summarize. Okay, why do people seek reward, relief, or escape? Okay. As I told you, they have chronic feeling of discontent, unrest, unhappiness, restlessness, irritability. And why do they have all this negative feeling? Because they have a brain disease. And why they have this brain disease? Some of it because, sorry, they have a brain disease. What is it? It is a low dopamine. Okay, and why they have low dopamine? Some of it is genetic. Genetic it means they are born like this. And part of it, environmental. Environmental means like things happen in their life make them unhappy, chronically unhappy. Like maybe trauma, maybe abuse, maybe neglect, uh, uh, maybe low academic achievement at a school. Yes? How can, like, how can something that happens in your life, like how does it chemically reduce your dopamine? Like if you've gone through trauma, like how does that happen? Okay, especially, you know, as a child, uh, you know, if you have a, to a big building, you have a big building, yeah. okay, and 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 the, you hit while you are building the building, you start hitting this building like with some other like an earthquake or something happen. 
is this building will be stable or not stable no. not be stable okay this will what happen in the brain okay if a child growing up okay and so mul many negative consequent sorry negative life event happen in their life okay the chemical balance will not be okay so we, when we do imaging studies how would how would you know because we people who were sexually abused or physically abused or verbally abused or even just neglected okay we take images of their brain okay we will find them the 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 dopamine i can show you some of these pictures You know, we, we, now we can take images of the brain to see how much is the activity of the dopamine inside the brain. So for, for this is a study about something else, but when we take images for people who were abused, we will find the concentration of dopamine inside their brain are low compared to other people. How, how does this happen? Like what, what, why this is happening? We don't know. We don't know why, like, because if we know we can give kids who are in an honest dysfunctional family we can give some medication to them to make more them more resilient to this event but we don't know so okay it just like drain out, like yeah it's gonna affect it so if you're asking how so you're asking about this one how do you read the brain scan <laughs> <laughs> so like, like what's the glowing and what's the normal blue is just your normal brain okay I, i'll explain blue. okay let's <laughs> explain this one yeah but i'm not gonna explain okay so this is a, a you know mri have you heard about mri okay this is something called the fmri functional mri so it, it take an image of the brain okay not just the image but just also the function of the brain which area is more active and which area is less active so you see this is a, a patient uh, who doesn't have any addiction we take a picture of his brain so these red lights is the activity in the dopamine okay so this is a normal control or normal patient then this one is a myth user do you know what is meth? yeah yeah crystal meth okay so they find uh, like the, the, the main purpose for this for this study is to show that uh, you know longer term using of addictive substance can cause mass damage and sometimes this method uh, sorry this damage is almost permanent why this is a guy who doesn't have an addiction this is a guy who was using cannabis sorry was using crystal meth then he stopped stopped for how long for one month then we take a picture of his brain of the reward center we are expecting the picture to be like this but it will be it was different so even he used the crystal meth and he stopped then we say okay let's take a picture after three years maybe when people stop using cannabis yeah when we stopped he stopped using sorry crystal meth for three years we expect it will be exactly like this because the three years he recovered now he is good no we find even that the damage is still some damage so the dopamine inside the brain is affected so what I want to say, if you are using an addictive substance and this, you stop, it's going to take the brain, your brain, years to recover. How, how would you know that? Because we take images after one, one month of abstinence, then we take an image after three years of abstinence, and we still see there are a little, there, there is improvement, of course there is improvement, but there, there is some damage, yes. someone gets it like from their environment can they then pass it down to their kids genetically yes but it takes okay it is very common that we we see uh, uh, the dad is alcoholic mom is alcoholic the kids will be alcoholic what if we take these kids and put them in foster homes away from these two addict okay we still they have higher tendency to become an addict so you can pass if you have the genetic if you have the dna of the uh, addictive tendency the kids will have it yeah but i mean like if like the kid is like perfect like if the kid like he's born normal but then like some stuff happens so he has low dopamine is that kid's kid more likely to develop 
flow dopamine due to his genetics? Yeah. Uh, can I show you? Okay. Show you something. If you ask me, what you are asking me, what is the causes of addiction? Like, is it genetic? Like, if some. Well, I'm like well, I'm just asking, like, can environmental like factors the cause go like into genetics? Like, can can environmentally like low dopamine like can that be possible? So you're born as a normal kid. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you're born you're as bo a normal kid. Yes. You get abused, which makes your dopamine low. And yes. And you decide to have kids. Will that make them have low dopamine? We'll put it. Yeah, we'll put that as a high risk due to your genetics, even though you didn't get it from <coughs> genetics, you got it from your environment. Can low dopamine be passed down genetically? Yes, okay. <laughs> okay, can I tell you, there is a science called the epigenetics. What is epigenetics? So some people will have some genes for, for addiction or for diabetes or for uh, schizophrenia. You have the genes, okay, but it is inactive, okay? You don't have any symptoms, you don't have any problem. Then something happened in the environment, okay? It's going to activate these genes from any inactive a uh, uh, state to an active state. So you are telling me, so there is a fam, there is a normal kid, he, he's fine, was abused by, uh, was, the environment wasn't that great, he become an addict, okay? Then what about his kids? The problem, okay, his kids could be, could, could become an addict too, not just because of, let's say he doesn't have the genetic part of it. Let's say that he doesn't have the, but the role model can also affect. So if you see your dad, the one who supports you is a caregiver, is using something. And this is how he cope with the stress. Every time he is stressed, he's drinking. Every time he's stressed, he's drinking. He, he, even he's telling you, don't drink. Alcohol is bad. But when you grow up, okay, when you grow up and uh, you, are, you feel stressed, subconsciously, indirectly, you'll find yourself with, uh, 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 drinking, okay? Okay, but like, <laughs> <laughs> like, like yes, it, yes, you can, you can get it. But, like, but what if, okay, what if the dad is an addict, he recovers completely, the kid doesn't even know. But since the dad was an addict due to his environment, does the dad's then genetics? No, the like, gene, okay, if you ask me, okay. The, the genetic, yeah. okay, the environmental, okay, the genetic, <laughs> genetic part is more stronger than the environmental part. I'm answering your question. So if the dad was gene uh, genetically, he's fine, but environmentally, he was not fine. No, this will not pass to the generations. Okay. Yeah, but yeah, but can I, can I, I, I want to be more specific. Okay. But if the environmental change continue, so if there is, okay. A kid, he's completely fine. Then who was abused, okay? Then he have kids were abused. The next generation were abused. The next generation, so they find if, if multiple generation is, in, is exposed to the same environmental negative experience, okay, it can change their genes. Because I'm telling you, uh, this is what I was trying to, to explain, that there is genetic, yes, but there is epigenetic. So some, some, some generation will have bad genes, but it's in, uh, it inactive. But if you keep, if you keep uh, stressing them, or you keep abusing them, or you keep uh, changing the environment, it can uh, manifest as a genetic disease. Make sense? Yeah, makes sense? yeah, but if you ask me, okay, an addiction, is it mainly genetic or environmental? 60% genetic, 40% environmental. Is, uh, I, I, I know it is easy to think black and white. Is gene, no, it is always combination. And this is what I'm trying to explain, why some people get addicted. It is a combination of bio, psychological, social, and spiritual factor. So biological, I mean genetic. So when I see, an, uh, okay, when a, a patient who have addiction come to see me, okay, how you treat them? First, I try to look why he is an addict. So I assess, I assess them biologically, psychologically, socially, spiritually. How do you assess, like biologically, I ask them, okay, um, do you have a family history of addiction in the family? Oh, my dad was an addict. Oh, my uncle was an addict. Oh, my mom was an addict. Okay, this tell me that there is biological factor in the thing. And then I ask them, for how long did you try or have used um, addictive substance? Because using addictive substance is a risk factor for developing addiction. I know there is substance abuse, right? Yeah, I want to experiment. I, I want to, you know, I will use cannabis only for a month. Use cannabis only for a month just to try how it works, 
but I have a strong will, I can stop. Yeah, okay, you have a strong will and you can stop, but you are putting yourself at huge risk of doing this because you can, you can trigger inactive genes that will manifest at, uh, itself. So, oh, yeah, this is one, yeah. No, I'm not talking about schizophrenia, okay? This is, yeah, this is a major, but I'm talking, you know, using a substance can activate the addiction cycle. Not just, one sec, not just for the cannabis. So you can use cannabis, then you quit. Then you find you are, you yourself are addicted to porn, pornography, or you are addicted to video games. Oh, what is that? Oh, oh, oh but I stopped the cannabis. I'm a good guy, you know, I stopped the cannabis. Yeah, but, but because you use the cannabis for a month, it can change the brain chemistry and they make you have more addictive tendency. So you're gonna start using others. Uh, uh, you can you're gonna scan the environment to find something that make you feel good. Yes. Wait, like here? Do you like? Are you like a family doctor or like a clinical thing? Like, what do you do now? Now? Yeah. <laughs> so. You're like a psychiatrist. Now I'm addiction medicine specialist. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I, this is eighty percent of my time I do this. Um, Twenty percent of my time I do family medicine. Wow. So what I do. I created. <laughs> <laughs> so I run, I run a program. So I am a family doctor for the addict to make it easy. Okay. I am a family doctor for the addict. So I run a program. So I run group therapy. Do you know when you want, you know, the people who sit in a circle and they talk? So yes, and I do. <laughs> you know, I, I do, you know, counseling, you know, counseling. Okay. So I do this too, and I prescribe medication because there are some medications that can help people recover from addiction. So, so like I as a specialist, how do you treat somebody who's like suffering? Like let's just say there's an alcoholic, how are you going to treat them? Okay. How are you going to treat them? You see, when when someone, okay, I want to explain this one. You know. <laughs> yes. You know, this is what I'm, you give up everything. So if you have uh, friends and school and you watch TV and you're in interested in certain sports and you have hobbies and you exercise and you like food, you know, when you start using the certain drugs, especially the hardcore drugs like uh, cocaine or heroin or these, they become the center of your life, okay? And you forget about everything, even your kids, even your, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Will you get addicted to like the, the meetings? <laughs> like yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jean, Jean told me these kids are very smart. And I can tell, yeah, yes. You know, when I specialize in addiction, this is the first question I ask. What if people get addicted to attending this meeting and they come every day? No, okay. There are some, pe there are some things, okay. There are some things, okay, that raise your dopamine but it will not cause a spike in dopamine. One of them is the social interaction. You know, if you sit in a meeting and you talk openly about your feeling and your experience, okay, you're gonna feel good. But this feeling will not cause addiction. Why, why? Because there is limit for how much dopamine gonna be released within this setting. Okay, make it easy. Uh, you saw, uh, why? Why cocaine or crystal meth is very, addict, uh, 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 very addictive compared to graduation? Because when you graduate, it releases dopamine, but it releases 150 units, okay? When you, you eat food, 150 units. Uh, sexual intercourse or orgasm, 20 units. Uh, sorry, 200 units. Nicotine, oh, now is higher. Oh, crystal meth, 1,000. Oh, cocaine, 500. Okay, so... Then you tell me, oh, this is good. <laughs> yeah, give me, give me some of this. This is good. Hey, but if someone's addicted to meth, like, how are you supposed to, like, treat them? Like, why do we wait till, like, the, the question? Yeah, I agree. It, what's that? Just wait till the question period. Yeah, I, see, I feel like, uh, do, do you have a, a, a pen and paper? Because I want to answer all the questions, but I want to. <laughs> you guys can, uh, you guys can get into the event and ask questions or not? Still. Instead of making paper and pens. Well, can you, can you I just I don't want to forget the know, questions. Once it's, it's asked, it will be recorded. So we don't want, we don't want to miss your questions. Maybe we can, you know, 
answer them if you don't have enough time. <laughs> can somebody can somebody uh, try? Make sure it's working. If you have a okay. Keep, keep going on with this. You tell me, okay, if this is releasing 1,000, okay, if this is releasing 1,000 units of dopamine, I want to use it, okay? I'm going to make me feel good. But I'll tell you, what, what's that? You, you tell me now. Now you know what is addiction, okay? What's the problem? Okay, if this is releasing 1,000 and cocaine 500, that's good. Give it to me. Why not? Why not? What do you think? Because then after a bit, it's not going to release 1,000. Yes, because the, the, you're going to develop tolerance, okay? This is one major problem. Another problem, you see, this is the food, this is how much dopamine. This is cocaine, this is how much dopamine. The yellow spots is the dopamine. E-cigarettes, sorry, I, I have a question. E-cigarettes, how much? Like, like no, the like nicotine. Is it 250? Yes. Is, is the, like, because the, the regular cigarettes have a specific amount of nicotine versus e-cigarettes versus so so which yeah one there is some study more? okay no there are some study that what what your system gets out of the nicotine from the cigarettes is the, st is the same as e-cigarettes uh, the same okay. yeah the same what you get from here is the problem is the nicotine but when I, what i i, I want to add some because you are so smart i want to add one one more point you know okay this is the main thing why why I don't want you to start using any addictive substance because of what I'm gonna say Okay, because you will find you know everyone is offering you. Okay, try this try that at, at, at high school The people offer other, each other different uh, chemical different addictive substance, but why because if you take something To release higher dopamine Your brain will feel oh there is something different now. There is something different then the brain will think, okay, oh, there is uh, 1,000, wow. Okay, what about I will lower, the brain will do this. I will lower the internal dopamine because you already, I have 1,000, which come, the brain doesn't make, the, the brain doesn't see the difference from coming outside or from inside. As we already have dopamine inside, okay. But when you take it from a chemical, you release all this amount and then the brain, oh, this is too much, too much, too much, too much. So the brain will do some adjustment, okay. To lower the internal dopamine then when you stop using the the crystal meth your your yes your <laughs> dopamine your dopamine level will be not not to the normal will be lower than normal that's why you will be depressed and sometimes this depression can take two years and which we call it what you call we call it negative emotional state okay when you use chemicals or addictive substance to release dopamine. Okay, if it, we, we, it's, we, we, we call it now neurological insult or neurological injury. It is like a stroke, you know. You know when you get a stroke and you become paralyzed and you can't walk? This is what you do when you use addictive drug, okay? It causes a brain injury. Your brain will become depressed and this depression can last for two years. Yes. Yes, they can become reliant on antidepressant, but the antidepressant, the, the, the spike, you know, the problem, the, there is difference between using addictive substance and using something that the doctor prescribed. The addictive substance, you use it on the streets, it causes a spike in the release on the dopamine. So the dopamine will be very high and then all of a sudden uh, very low. What we give in the clinic, whatever is the, the, the medication we give, it causes like a curve, like a slightly high a little bit. When the brain is, the dopamine or serotonin, these levels are slightly higher than normal, not causing a spike like this, okay, it, it becomes less addictive. Because addiction cycle becomes when there is higher spike and then you crash. Then when you crash, you're gonna feel not okay. So if I become dependent, so b people who are have high blood pressure, they take blood pressure medication every day, right? Are they dependent on uh, blood pressure medication? Yes. If this is addiction, no. Why? Because 
what is addiction? The addiction is criteria. That you have interpersonal problems, legal problems, the, the symptoms that we say. But to be dependent on something, that is fine. But if you become a dependent on something causing you complication, we call this addiction. Okay. Does it make sense? Yeah. So I can, you know, they can come to, they can come attend my, 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 my practice. The, I can prescribe them a medication. Uh, it will not give the euphoric effect, the same euphoric effect is the same that they get from the addictive substance, but it will make them at least be able to engage in the program. Okay, what caused them to stop it? <laughs> what is the treatment? Is that like a can people like no, that's like Okay. So I'll answer both of your questions. You ask me a question, <laughs> what if someone with crystal meth addiction, what's he gonna do? Yeah. And then you ask me what about uh, if they start antidepressant, are they gonna, they can stop it or not? I'm gonna answer this. Okay, someone come to me, highly addicted, okay, is addicted to, co addicted to cocaine, addicted to heroin, addicted to whatever. There is like, they spend one week in the hospital, we call it detox, okay? Which I told you, the first week or two weeks when you stop uh, addictive substance, some, of, some people will have seizures. So I need to give them some medication to calm them down. Some people will have diarrhea, so I, I need to give them something for diarrhea. Some people will have severe headache. We call the first two weeks detox. Then we send them to rehab, rehabilitation center, and they spend one month or two months there. Why? So they will not be in contact with drug dealers. Nobody will offer them anything. Okay. And then they come to attend, okay, see a counselor regularly, attend the AA meeting, as you mentioned. Okay, uh, and then we, we will have a treatment program for them. So w at this level, we will have a treatment program. What, what is the treatment? What would be the treatment program? Where is it? Okay, when we treat people with addiction or mental health, we need to do biological, psychological, social, and spiritual treatment. Okay, so you're asking me how I can bring, I'll give you some tips, how I can bring my dopamine up, how I can bring my dopamine up. So there are some things biologically to, 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 to improve your physical state, like exercise, sleep hygiene, take care of your sleep, okay, take care of your diet. This is how we treat them. This is biological part. Psychologically is the counseling, one-on-one -on -one counseling or the group therapy. This brings the dopamine up too. Sometimes we ask them to journal their feeling. And this is good for all of you. I know at this stage, okay, at, at, at this stage of your life, you have lots of feeling, okay? Sometimes a lot, lots of them are negative. One of the most effective, way to, uh, effective ways to handle this feeling is to journal them. Does anyone here journal their feeling? No? <laughs> just one? We have one. <laughs> just been something that yeah. something about it before. Why do you guys think you guys got journals in Bible study? Like, journals? <laughs> in Bible study? Yeah. I don't write down my feelings. Oh, it's like the notes in Bible study. Why do we get journals like, drawn? Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so you need to journal, okay, how do you feel? <laughs> because, uh, okay, the feeling could be overwhelming, and then people will try seek reward, relief, or escape from this feeling. So you, be, you better have an outlet for this feeling instead of seeking reward, relief, or escape. Okay, instead of getting addicted to Facebook, getting addicted to video games, getting addicted to, uh, yeah, journaling, your feeling will help you to relax. So you will not need to uh, seek re reward, relief, or escape. Also social, uh, social is very important. Having a healthy relationship is very important. Um, What's that? Mary has a question. Yes. <laughs> what if you're addicted to journaling? Like she asks. <laughs> yeah, okay. What if you are addicted to journaling? <laughs> okay. Can I tell you? Okay. Can I say something? Yes. Anything in life can be ad ad addictive. Anything. As you may. Okay. So there's lots of things can be addictive. How I'm going to control this? Something like sports. I told you exercise can be very healthy, can be very unhealthy. 
okay we need all the time we need some help from other people and from our teacher to balance our life so, so a journal journal every day journal every day for from 10 to 20 minutes a day that's fine but if you find yourself <laughs> journaling six hours a day oh there is something wrong okay so about journaling our feelings like for example if i went with a you know, dispute with my parents or family and they like i hate my life now i just like i want to quit hope <laughs> yes. something i can go i have this fight and how how to journal these feelings like okay can i say something okay how i'm gonna okay first i start with the feeling okay i feel depressed i feel angry i feel frustrated so i put the feeling okay. then i put the thoughts behind the feeling okay, okay. which could be oh i have the worst parent ever oh, okay I, I i'm gonna fail the my exams or oh, i'm gonna quit uh, school or oh, i'm gonna do this you write what you're thinking about the thoughts crazy thoughts you put it all of it then look at it look at it if this is rational or irrational uh, yeah, I don't want to say that. Yeah, but when you put your feeling and your thoughts, you, you will find them, lots of them are irrational. Then you can replace it with more rational thoughts. Let's make sure we tear this paper before it goes Yeah, to some, yeah, yeah. Or you're going to lose your paper. I think, yeah, I... Do you want to give me the question or do you want me? I can go, Jean, ask me. He just said anything can be, yeah, he said like. We're family kids to church. Okay, okay, someone is, okay. So anyway, we need to balance. We need to balance these aspects in our life. We need to balance the exercise. Listen, listen, guys. Okay. Listen, everyone. Should I pray all the time? Spiritual aspect of the treatment. Should I pray eight hours every day and not going to school? No, there's something wrong. Okay, I need to balance these part. I need to exercise. I need to take care of my diet. I need to journal. I need to have a relationships that I can trust, people that I can trust. I need also to pray uh, and attend the church. Yes. Addicted to you? Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. Okay. Let's make it one discussion. One discussion. Let's make it one discussion. Okay. Can we answer this? Because he's talking about addiction to relationships. Yes. Okay. So if you are. Some people get addicted to relationships, so they want to be in a relationship all the time. And one of the signs of this relationship, you will try to control the. P you, first, you will become very obsessed about them. You think about it all the time, and you don't want to study. You don't even sometimes you forget your meals. You don't want to eat because you are thinking about them. Okay. And the second stage after the obsession, you will become a behavioral thing. You want to control them. You want them to talk to you. You want them to text you all the time. You want them to call you all the time. Yeah. When it become like this, again, some people will seek reward, relief or escape by someone else. Okay. Oh, but this is good. This is a, a romance. This is love. This is, a, you know, some people get married because, of, no, you know, people... People who start a relationship with this kind of obsession, they end up with divorce. They don't continue like this. This is not a healthy relationship. It is toxic, yes. So literally anything can become toxic. Yes. So like any, anything not in moderation can become toxic. Yes. Okay. Even water, if you, there is something called the wa water toxicity. If you drink lots of water, you can get psychosis because of water. You'll become crazy because of water. Yes, Sarah. Oh, this, uh, this Sarah. 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 Yes. Yeah. No, I'm just gonna ask if saints <laughs> are like dedicated to, like monks are dedicated to God, and then their lives are fully focused on that. Like they try to refrain from speaking to other people and whatnot. Yes, she's asking me monks, uh, desert monks, 
uh, in Egypt or here in Canada or US when they leave everything and the focus just on praying. But what you don't know about monks, they, when they are in monastery, they work, you know, they have certain things, duties to do, and they take care of themselves. This is one thing. And uh, actually, monk, okay, what they do, they treat their addiction completely. How? Because they detach from everything in life. I told you, anything in life can be uh, very addictive. Uh, very addictive. Okay, so some monks will choose, okay, no. Uh, because I feel I'm gonna get addicted to food, so I'm gonna fast more hours. Or oh, I'm addicted to money. Or oh, I'm gonna give my money to the poor. Or oh, I'm addicted to relationship. No, I'm gonna step back a little bit, and maybe I will call my mom once or twice uh, a month, and that is enough. So actually, to be a monk, this is this is the opposite side of addiction. It is not an addiction, you know. And usually, in our churches, there is mentorship and discipline ship. If someone come and they say, oh, I want to be a monk. No, they need to have a priest who uh, approve this and they assess their life. And usually they come, they come out of success, not out of, of a failure. So some people will use the, the monastery as a way to s reward the relief or escape. Okay, but the, when you have a priest uh, or a father of confession, they're going to be assessed. And usually people uh, who, who are uh, going to be a monk, they come from uh, success, not as, a, as an escape. So it is totally opposite to addiction. And the, you know why, why we fast at the church to please God? Because when we fast to please God, no, we you train, okay, like most of our activities that we do in the, in the church, fasting or praying or giving the poor, these t some techniques, behavioral techniques to treat addiction. Because when you indulge in making money, no, you need to remind yourself, you know, I, I might get addicted to money, so let's give some to the poor. Okay, I, I, if you find yourself addicted to food, oh no, let's fast for three hours, four hours, or th let's stop eating this. So, so these behavioral techniques, okay, huh? we are not, it, it sounds like you are doing to please God, no, but I see it, how I see it now, you are treating our addictive nature because addiction now, I told you, 60% of people are struggling with it. So we need to put some control on our behavior, whatever is the behavior. And our church teach us the moderation in everything is better um, than overindulgence. What's the question? So, uh, do you think we can be addicted to church? Yes. So I have the next one. Uh, this, this loading just a minute. Okay. If I feel like I'm dealing with addiction, where should I go for help? Okay, this is... Uh, so for adults, there is something called adult addiction services. For youth and teenager, there is something called youth addiction services. Okay, so if you Google youth addiction services, okay, I think they have an office in Northwest. You can go and they sit with a counselor and they can help you with the whole process. It depends on your addiction. If you have cannabis addiction or nicotine addiction, Another resource, you can talk to your family doctor and he can guide you uh, uh, what to do. It depends, you, you know, every, every stage of addiction is different. If you're struggling with the smoke, let's say smoking is uh, e-cigarettes and the smoking is a common one, there is an app, some apps to quit smoking. If you type quit smoking, there are apps on yes. the phone, okay? It can guide you with some, with some techniques how to quit smoking. But uh, again, you need the, may, the core of the problem is we need to learn some, maybe I will come one day, uh, another talk, how to cope with this feeling because people looking for reward, relief or escape because of the feeling they have inside. So maybe I will teach you, I'll come another day to teach you how we can cope with the emotional pain that sometimes we struggle with. If I feel depressed, what should I do? If I feel anxious, what should I do? If I feel 
hopeless, what should I do? These feelings are very common in teenage. And we, I can come, maybe another day we can talk about how to handle this feeling. <laughs> okay, this is a big, okay, I, I put 45 slide uh, because I, I, I wanted, not about hashish, about the whole, yeah. <laughs> because, yeah, I, I put the thing that I, I thought you might ask about it, so we can navigate around the slides. So, this is hashish, okay? <laughs> uh, so cannabis, cannabis, cannabis has two active ingredients, THC and CBD, okay? Um, there is marijuana, okay, that has 20% of THC, so the addictive substance, so we have THC and CBD, okay? THC is the addictive substance. Okay, THC is addictive substance. It is psychoactive. Psychoactive means it can change chemicals inside your brain that gonna make you, uh, they're gonna change your feeling. This means, uh, so ha hashish or uh, THC or cannabis is a psychoactive. So we have marijuana. Marijuana, uh, it has the upper limit for it, 20% of THC. Okay, hashish, which is concentrated form of cannabis, it can have up to uh, 40%. Um, we have hash oils, it can have up to 60% of THC. Also, there is shatters, it can have up to 100% of THC. So there are uh, forms, uh, different forms of uh, cannabis. Okay, is cannabis, is, is what do you think, if, is cannabis is dangerous? Like, this is, uh, it is addictive. Does it have side effects, do you think? Mm -hmm. yes. What are the side effects? Yes, at this, you're up, uh, 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 yeah, people younger than 25 years old, their brain is still developing. So we prefer not to put inside your brain any psychoactive substance. We're gonna, it's gonna change chemicals, and not just the dopamine, it's gonna change the serotonin, all other chemicals. And we find when we, when we change or disturb these chemicals, it affects your attention, it affects your memory, it affects your reasoning, it affects your ability to solve the problems. So we don't wanna disturb this ability or minimize or change anything within this. Uh, uh, there are different forms how people use marijuana. Some people cook marijuana and they eat it. Uh, <laughs> okay, so I st marijuana, you will find people, oh, it is a medication, you know, yeah. give it a try. The, yeah, yeah, I prescribe, I have 1,000 patients on medical marijuana. It's like oil. No, marijuana, like we, we, give, we, give, we give them vaporizers to vaporize marijuana. We give them, they can cook with it or they can ingest the oil. Okay. Okay, okay. So I have, okay. I have 1,000 patients, more than 1,000 patients on medical marijuana. And one of the first doctors in the city who prescribed marijuana as a medicine was me, okay? <laughs> I think all of them kind of come to see me, okay. But do you prescribe it to young people like uh, at this age, like what? what they, no, I prescribe it for people who have HIV, HIV. I have, I, I prescribe it to people who have cancer. I, okay. The eyes? <laughs> no, HIV. Okay. Oh, this is okay. Is it a painful? Okay. okay. This is a, give me. I, I I will explain what how we prescribe. Okay. I'm gonna explain everything. I'm gonna explain. Okay. <laughs> These are the indication. Why you prescribe it? Yeah. B I prescribe it for HIV, for cancer, for anorexia, for severe pain, for palliative care. You know palliative care mean? But people who are dying in the stage cancer, like people who are dying, so we want to relieve their pain, so they give them cannabis. But why? So like, is it like a painkiller? Yeah, so there is THC and CBD. Okay, 
people who have cancer they don't eat <laughs> so it Im uh, cannabis improve your their appetite this is one of the benefits so it improve their uh, appetite also THC cause sedation so if a cancer patient cannot sleep you give them THC at night they can sleep so we can use it as a sleeping aid okay also CBD is anti-inflammatory okay so if you have inflammation if you take CBD it will lower your inflammation so we can use it in immunity disorders like rheumatoid arthritis or systemic lupus also the main thing is it is a painkiller this one is a painkiller so I can use it in severe pain whatever is the pain but again so you are sitting at the clinic just anyone oh I have headache cannabis next <laughs> <laughs> I have some abdominal pain cannabis I have blurry vision can I? no we we need to use all conventional therapy first like the regulated uh, medications that we know and this will be the last result I give I have 1000 patient yeah but these are very chronic very severe disease that is not treated by anything in the market so I have to document in my notes that we have tried everything available and nothing is working then I give them this and you know when I give them this what I ask them I ask them to sign an agreement okay when I prescribe cannabis the cannabis that people use I ask them to sign an agreement what is in the agreement I tell them me as a doctor I don't know the longer term effect of this if they discover that in 10 years that cannabis can cause cancer it is not my problem because I don't have enough study <laughs> I don't have enough information because there is limited studies about cannabis so why so I'm telling you patient dying from can cancer I'm giving them or dying of, or have severe epilepsy or HIV I'm giving them cannabis but I'm telling them you know you don't sue me for doing this because I don't have enough information so people telling you coming telling you oh doctors use it so give it a try it is fine no doctor use it but I use it after I try everything else in the pharmacy okay and then I keep this the last one so don't go ahead and try something addictive because it's gonna change your brain chemistry and they have you know I need to do liver test kidney test uh, sometimes lung function test to make sure the lung is fine before I prescribe this so I'm not just sitting out uh, yeah next <laughs> she asked <laughs> she, they ask me how, how am I gonna make sure that they uh, don't abuse it because I put I, I, I put limit for how much is the prescription so they can't go online it is online the medical marijuana is online so the order they can't order more than I specify in the prescription No, you, you can you can oh, there is many 40 different companies online you can buy medical marijuana from it. But like you have to order online? Yes. So you can't like you can't like go to the pharmacy. No, the, no, you can't go to the pharmacy and the one that you have in uh, here these are the recreational ones. Yeah, yeah, I know. Okay. So but the medical one is still online. I'm, I'm not sure about the recreational I'm, I'm not sure the concentration but the, me the medical that we prescribe the maximum is 25 percent the maximum we prescribe as a doctor 25 percent so, uh, THC, THC. THC if you're like prescribing cannabis is cannabis like prescribing it is this like as a what's it called like kind of a replacement instead of prescribing something like fentanyl or something as like a painkiller like can it, can it be a replacement for specific like opioids and stuff that you use yes Yes. So is it it is less addictive, less addictive than opioid. So it's better to use like cannabis than to use like narcotics, other kinds of narcotics for pain. Yes, but because we don't have enough studies about it, it is not as easy as you think. Oh, the bliss is because it is. Uh, it looks like less addictive. Yeah. Because yeah. I need enough studies to show, like for example, the vaping, the vape, the vape. Okay, I I prescribe vapes for patient. <laughs> <laughs> I, to you, okay. <laughs> the, okay, but I, the same thing they sign. I don't have enough information about what is the long term effect of vaping. Okay, and now we, say, we thought at the beginning, theoretically, because the, what is the vaping? You heat the liquid, then you inhale the vapor. Theoretically, this is, uh, this is cool. Okay, but you find, <laughs> you find now people having uh, something called lipoid 
pneumonia popcorn and the popcorn lung um, but okay I'm gonna be, I, I'm gonna end the the class today with with the, what is the side effect of cannabis what is the side effect of, of vaping what about this what, what is the complications that happen from using cannabis what's the complication that happen with vaping nicotine okay the, these are the problems that happen there is dependence that might have a dependence means addiction okay it's gonna affect your problem solving ability it's gonna affect your short term memory especially if you start using it before age 18 and I see no, you know this is not just uh, something I read in the books and I, this is I see in the clinic like kids is that is this I have lots of uh, addicts they tell me oh I have been using uh, I have been using cannabis since age 12 or since age 10 <laughs> you know no I have I have seen people like this and you can tell I can tell from the way they talk the memory has something wrong the concentration there is something wrong the attention there is something wrong because the cannabis is affect all of this another problem if you're getting it from other people sometimes it is mixed with other sometimes mar marijuana is mixed with heroin and cocaine and you hear in the news sometimes okay people overdose on marijuana oh marijuana doesn't kill yeah the marijuana doesn't kill but if they add a little bit of heroin in it it can kill you okay um, of course it impaired driving sometimes it causes schizophrenia and paranoia I, I, I have a patient you know in e this is in Egypt he was I think like 15 years old or 14 years old someone one of his friends give him one joint of marijuana just one joint yeah and he had one joint okay I'm not talking here for a month after one joint he become full-blown psychotic like he started seeing stuff and hearing voices and he, he become very paranoid and they start feeling oh there is camera recording me there is a <laughs> conspiracy against me you know uh, 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 this is just from one joint okay so yeah there is because if you have genetic okay if you have genetic tendency to schizophrenia marijuana will trigger it if you have genetic predisposition to bipolar disorder, marijuana will trigger it. Yes. Okay. Can you stop like the uh, <laughs> 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 like more cannabis, but, like the C B D instead of the THC? Uh -huh. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay, he's asking now, can I add, yeah, you will find this online, you'll find this online, okay, to avoid the side effect of triggering psychosis at C B D. So if you are taking THC Put a little bit of CBD, you'll be fine. Okay. Like, yes. Let's say you already have like schizophrenia and you just like no THC, just all CBD. What help or just not do it? No, we don't prescribe CBD for schizophrenia. We don't prescribe cannabis for any mental health problem because any all study have shown cannabis worsen any mental health problem. If you have an anxiety after cannabis, it will become worse. I don't want you to believe things that you read on Facebook. Oh, it treats depression, CBD. Oh, it treats uh, anxiety. It treats this. You know, you know. These are big companies. These people are making money out of this. So they put some information, medically incorrect, just to make you, just to make you uh, uh, give it a try and use it. So CBD, yeah, if you could teach C, uh, CBD, CBD, uh, yes, is way less addictive than THC, but it's still a psychoactive substance. It works on serotonin level. So why you want to disturb some chemicals inside your brain? And we don't know what is, what is the limits and what is the full picture of the side effect of C using CBD. And if you have, I, even with the vape, you know, I know the huge cloud and uh, you feel good. Uh, yeah, yeah. But the damage you are causing, it, it can be long term damage. You know, lifelong problems. Why? Why you want to start it at this age? And do you have a problem? If you have a problem controlling, again, seeking reward, relief or escape, we need to work on this. And instead of masking it with other addictive substances. Yes. Both. you know, some people use shisha, put the cannabis in it. 
Okay, you know that. <laughs> yes, okay. But the chemicals, okay, the chemicals that you find in cigarettes or shisha, like thousands of toxin is, is in cigarettes and shisha, okay? But if you are asking me, but compare cannabis and shisha, which one is more addictive? Okay, so you are comparing nicotine with cannabis. Which one is more addictive? Cannabis. Okay, but but the, the, the people people ask me, okay, people ask me, okay, so good, no cannabis, but shisha, yes. No, I didn't say that. <laughs> I, you know, this is black and white thinking, okay? When I say this is worse than this, okay, forget about this, let's do this. <laughs> no, both, you know, okay, let, let, let's, okay, I'm gonna, also there is a theory, I don't know if you heard about this one, gateway drug theory. You know, when you have the mindset, okay, when you have the mindset to use illegal drug, not illegal, now cannabis is illegal, to have addictive drug, when you have the mindset to use uh, addictive drug, you will have the same mindset to use, so if you start with cannabis, maybe we're gonna end up with shisha, maybe smoking cigarettes, maybe heroin, maybe cocaine, maybe fentanyl, maybe overdose and die. And we call this theory, gateway theory so sometimes they say uh, smoking cigarettes is a gateway drug some people say oh smoking cannabis is a gateway drug no it is not about which one it is about the mindset if you started oh i'm gonna cope with my negative feeling and seeking reward relief or escape by addictive substance you are starting the addiction cycle most of people that i'm seeing every day like we, the patients the thousands of patients that i'm treating Okay, they started at this age. Okay, and they started with experimenting stuff. So why you wanna start a cycle that you can't control or you can't stop? Okay, okay. And uh, uh, cannabis affects the sexual function, it affects the sperm. Um, anyway, there is, it affects the cardiovascular, but I will not go into details, but it has so much, so many negative, uh, consequence of using cannabis also it has withdrawal you know if you use cannabis you know after any high there is crash remember this any high there is crash after it cocaine there is crash heroin crash cannabis crash cigarettes crash and these are the withdrawal sleep problem irritability sweating and anxiety vaping uh, You know, do you have any question about vaping? No? Do you believe it is safe or unsafe? Why? <laughs> Stuff it in it, yes. Because if you go on YouTube, you'll find, oh, it is very safe. It has, because vaping, it has only glycerol or glycerin. Uh, glycerin is vegetable glycerin. Uh, and propylene glycol, you'll find this in online, okay? These, you know, this stuff, these two things, these are the major component of the liquid. You will find them in ice cream, you will find them in cosmetics, like in uh, body lotions, you will find them in the fog machine, you know, when you attend a, uh, an event and you find them. So it is safe, it is safe, you know, but the, you find them in popcorn and yes we're using them but we eat them in ice cream we eat them in the creams we we use it as a cream yes it doesn't have any any problem yeah but the problem is when you inhale them this is a problem so yes there is okay it is safe to use them as a cream it's fine it's safe because this is what it is safe it is in a, a, in a What's that? It's not going into your lungs. Yes. It is not going into your lung. This is a problem. Um, yeah, so as someone of you mentioned, the brain is still developing at this age. The brain is still developing at this age until age 25. So any nicotine consumption will affect uh, the brain development. It, it change it causes behavioral problems, attention problems, cognitive problems. 
but someone will tell me, oh, so there are some liquid zero nicotine. There are th some liquid are zero nicotine. What about this? Yeah, there are some cases we find the, they develop pneumonia. We call it chemical pneumonia because it's caused because the chemical in the flavors of the liquid or lipoid pneumonia, which is cause of the glycerin that you find in the vapor. Um, Some people will use, telling you, oh, I will use e-cigarettes to stop smoking. You know this? Yes. Yeah, as a transition. Okay, study have shown they don't stop. So we expect, okay, I smoke cigarettes. Okay, vape, no, 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 I quit smoking, I will use vape. Then hopefully down the road, I will quit. No, they continue on the vape. And the amount of nicotine, the, yeah, vape is, is safer than smoking cigarettes, yes, but the vapes, the the nicotine in it and the chemical in it it still cause damage to the lung okay guys mm -hmm. i think uh, i'm done <laughs> yeah and bob corn lung that you mentioned any questions Why do they ask about my salary? Yeah. Did they want to get uh, maybe the same career, <laughs> same career path? <laughs> I'm sure they want to prescribe the cannabis part. This is what they want. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, which one? I have to. I have like. Uh, I have one more. Is that one? That's the last one. The last one? That's the last one. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Not that. It's kind of that we done. He seems fine. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> 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 Why is he doing fine? Okay, so I don't know. You wanna yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Snoop Dogg. <laughs> and he seems fine. Snoop Snoop. Snoop Snoop Dogg. Why why he's doing fine? I don't know. I don't think hey, what what what's that what, what, what does Snoop? So this guy he's a rapper, his name's Snoop Dogg. He's okay. been saying that he's doing he does weed all the time and he's fine. But yeah. like he seems like okay. How, like how old is he? Like, I don't know. Like, oh, he's like, he's like, I, I don't, I don't he's think he's okay. Like, he's like 50. Oh, no, I swear he's 45. 45? Yeah. 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 What yeah. about that good like, soya? Like, I can use it. I can use it. I can use it. I can use it. Like, I can use it. I can use it. I can use it. Don't be afraid and then ask questions. He's 48 years old. 48 years old? Okay. Which one? I call it. Okay, can, can I say something? Yeah, I don't see you. Do you ask that question? Yeah. You stop vibrating. I'm vibrating right now. What? If you don't know, what if you don't know you are addicted? And no. So, what is what? It's like if there is any symptoms that they can define whether they're addicted or not. No. no. Okay. If something, okay. If you something you you think you uh, you might be addicted to or not, stop it, and see what's gonna happen. If you can stop it, that's fine. Like if something is with potential harm, okay, like nicotine and cannabis. Of course, we need to stop this. Oh no, I'm using it. I'm not addicted to it. Okay, stop it completely. Uh, no, no, I will not stop it because it feels good. Oh, it feels good. So you are seeking reward, relief, or escape. This is the American Society of Addiction Medicine definition of addiction. So, so, and the, as I told you, any psychoactive substance can cause. And the the people that you are talking about, do you know? Do you know about their memory? Okay, he's a singer. He doesn't need his memory. He doesn't need. He doesn't need his attention, concentration, or any of this. Like, like I think you would be concerned, so it's okay.
It's just because he's black. No, no, he's not. He literally looks all the time. Okay. Thank you, guys.